Hi, I'm Stu from Hivemind Automation and welcome to The Hive. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at setting up remote access to your Home Assistant instance when you're away from home. We're going to be looking at two different ways to do that. One of these methods is free and the other method costs a small amount of money every month. This is the sixth video in my 2022 Getting Started with Home Assistant series. So while I roll the intro, why don't you take a moment to subscribe? And if you hit the bell icon, you'll also get notified when I release new videos each week. While you're at it, check out my affiliate links to buy some of the gadgets that you might've seen in some of my previous videos and some other ways to support the channel, such as signing up for NordVPN or contributing through my buy me a coffee link. With all of that out of the way, let's get started. So in this getting started series, we've set up Home Assistant and throughout that process, we've seen how we can control our smart gadgets from a web interface by toggling switches and those kinds of things. The obvious problem here is that as soon as we leave the house and by extension, our local wireless network, we're then not going to be able to control those accessories or monitor our sensor data. Now in a future video, we'll be taking a look at the Home Assistant mobile companion apps for both iOS and Android. But for now, we're just going to be focusing on using a web interface. Now, obviously being able to access this from outside your home opens up some additional functionality, such as being able to receive alerts when you're out and about or controlling some accessories and being able to check the data on some sensors and even cameras while you're away on a single pane of glass. Now, as I mentioned at the start of the video, there's a couple of different ways to handle this. The first, and in my opinion, the easiest way, it does cost money. It's only $6.50 a month, but that does go towards supporting the Nabu Casa team, the team that actually create Home Assistant and ESP Home. At $6.50 a month, or you can get the annual plan now for $65 a year, I think it's absolutely worthwhile just spending those few dollars. So first we're going to take a look at setting up Home Assistant Cloud. So over on our Home Assistant instance, we're just on homeassistant.local port 8123. And we're going to go over to settings and then Home Assistant Cloud. And if I click on Home Assistant Cloud, it tells us that Home Assistant Cloud provides us with a secure remote connection to our instance while we're away from home. It allows us to connect with cloud-only services such as Amazon Alexa and Google Assistant as well. It's run by Nabu Casa, founded by the founders of Home Assistant, and Home Assistant Cloud is a subscription service with a free one month trial and no payment information is necessary. And you can click on this link here to start your free one month trial. It gives us access to controlling Home Assistant away from home, integrating with Google Assistant, integrating with Alexa, easy integration with webhook based apps like OwnTracks. Uh, and uh, we agree to the following terms and conditions, which you can click on there with the terms and conditions and the privacy policy. We just need to put in an email address and a password uh, in order to kick that off. So I'm going to do that and then I'm going to click start trial and I should receive an email on how to activate the account. So I've received an email on my phone asking me to confirm my email address. I'm just going to tap the confirm link uh, in the email there and it's taking me over to confirm the account. Uh, it's successfully confirmed, we can now log in. So if I go back to Home Assistant and type in the password that I created, and then click sign in, it has now signed in. It's a trial user and the trial expires on August the 9th cloud connection is connected. So now that we've signed in to our trial setup on Home Assistant Cloud, uh, we can turn on this remote control toggle and it says Home Assistant Cloud provides a secure remote connection to your instance while you're away from home and your instance will be available at your Nabu Casa URL. And uh, there's an option here to copy it. So I'm going to toggle that switch on 
It also shows us some certificate info. At the moment it's saying not connected, trying to reconnect, and I think that's just finished reconnecting. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to copy the URL here uh, to my clipboard, and I'm just going to, on my iPhone over here, paste that and go. Uh, and it's quite a long uh, URL there, which I'm obviously going to need to blur out, but uh, you'll see, uh, you're about to give uh, this URL access to your Home Assistant instance, and I need to sign into that instance. So I'm going to type in my username and the password that I set up for that instance, and we'll tap login. So that's now loading the data, and we see that we are connected to HiveMind Demo, and we've got uh, all of the same things that we would have had on our regular instance. But if I turn the Wi-Fi off uh, and head back out here, we can refresh the page and it's telling me that it's about to give access. I'm going to put in the same username and password that I just put in a moment ago. I'm going to tap keep me logged in just to uh, put a cookie there so that I don't have the same problem of logging in again. So now if I log in, you'll see in the top right hand corner of my phone, we're on 4G, there's no Wi-Fi connection, but we can still uh, flip things on and off. And uh, if I turn the Wi-Fi bar, WLED bar off, it worked uh, and we can turn that back on. And this is as if I was out and about, not actually... Uh, at home uh, sitting right in front of the accessory. We can still control all of those things. And certainly here where I live, I don't have great 4G signal either. So uh, it's nice to know that even with not a huge amount of 4G signal, I can still control my home. I'll turn my Wi-Fi back on just because. So just by copying that Nabucasa URL, we were able to connect to our Home Assistant instance. And we can use that URL when we take a look at the Home Assistant mobile companion apps in the next couple of videos. And when we look at that, you might actually also notice that the cloud address is auto discovered by the companion app, but we'll look at that in the next video. It's also worth noting that this web address isn't exactly memorable, and so it may be worthwhile if you're looking for something a little bit easier to remember to type in, especially if you're not going to be using the Home Assistant companion apps. We're going to take a look at setting up another method. This method is completely free, but it does require a bare bit of extra setup, some of which I'm not going to be able to demonstrate because it involves setting on your home router. Now for this method, we've got some prerequisites and that is going to start with a DuckDNS account. So over on duckdns.org, I'm going to click this item, sign in with GitHub across the top. So we will click that and it's going to ask me to sign into my GitHub account. So uh, it's already remembered my uh, GitHub account details because uh, I've saved those passwords. I'm going to click sign in uh, and I'm going to pop over to my GitHub mobile account on my phone and it's just going to ask me for two-factor authentication. I'm going to approve that uh, and uh, it's redirected me back to the DuckDNS page. The account name, the type, we've got this token here uh, and when the token was generated, which was six days ago when I was writing this uh, episode uh, and uh, the created date. We can click on these three pipes at the top right and click recreate token. It's going to say, are you sure? And if we click OK, it's generated a new token for us. Uh, and we would need to update any clients if we regenerate that token. If for whatever reason your DuckDNS token uh, gets compromised, you can quickly and easily regenerate that token. We're also going to need to create a subdomain for DuckDNS.org. So I'm going to create a subdomain uh, and I'll click add domain. So the subdomain I've created has now been added to my account uh, and it's got the current IP, uh, which is my public IP here. We can do things like update it. We can put in IPv6 addresses if we want. Uh, but now that we have these details, we've got our subdomain uh, and we've got our token and I'm just going to uh, copy that token. I'm gonna head back over to Home Assistant. So, Inside Home Assistant, I'm going to go back to settings and then I'm going to go to add-ons. 
uh, and we spoke about add-ons in a previous episode and I'm going to click on the add-on store and I want to set up duck DNS, the free dynamic DNS with Let's Encrypt. Uh, you could do Let's Encrypt separately, but uh, the Duck DNS plugin has everything all in there. So I'm going to click on Duck DNS. I'm going to click Install and give this a couple of minutes to install Duck DNS. So now that it's installed, what is going on? With Duck DNS installed, I'm just going to very quickly restart my Home Assistant. So after restarting Home Assistant, if I go to Add-ons and then Duck DNS, uh, we should be able to head over to the configuration page now, and we can. And we can uh, clear out this default domain, and we're going to put in uh, the domain that we set up. So uh, it is. And then we need to make sure that we put in .duckdns.org after the subdomain that we set up. So we'll hit that. We're going to paste the token in there as well. Uh, and I'm going to change the accept terms to true in the Let's Encrypt configuration here. And then I'm going to click save. Uh, and that has now saved the configuration. I'm going to head over to the info page. I'm going to turn on start on boot. Watchdog and auto update are also turned on. And I'm going to click start. And now uh, that has now set up the duck dns config so i'll head back over to my mobile phone here and i'm going to open a new tab in safari i'm going to turn wi-fi off and i'm going to type in the address that i created in duck dns dot duck dns dot org now with my setup i've already got a port forwarded to the outside world so i'm going to put in 8124 i've redirected 8124 to 8123 in my case and that's just because i have two instances of home assistant and you'll see that we've got the duck dns access to our home assistant instance there if i sign in using my regular username and password and i'll tap keep me logged in we'll log in loading data a little bit slow because I don't have great 4G connection here. Uh, but now we have our Home Assistant here on our mobile phone and I can do the same thing. I can tap to turn off the WLED strip behind me and turn it back on. Now, obviously, to make this work, you are going to have to set up port forwarding for port 8123 to your Home Assistant server on your router. Now. I'm not going to be able to tell you how to do this because the process is going to be different for every router. And my router here is an enterprise grade one, not something that you would get with your regular internet connection. My advice on this, however, is to simply Google your router make and model number followed by port forwarding. And then once that's done and DuckDNS is set up, you should also be able to type in your DuckDNS subdomain and the port number that you've forwarded to 8123 on your Home Assistant instance and hit that Home Assistant service every time. What DuckDNS does is it sits there and runs and every five minutes it checks your public IP address and updates the DuckDNS site with that public IP address. So it will redirect uh, even though you don't have a static IP address on your home internet connection. So that's setting up Home Assistant for access while you're away. As I mentioned, the obvious benefit here is the ability to access your sensor data and accessory controls from anywhere in the world. And it's especially worth mentioning that the mobile app, which we'll be taking a look at in a future video. That's all we have for this video, and I do hope that it helped you in your home automation journey. Be sure to comment down below with home automation ideas that you want to see covered in future videos. Don't forget to follow Hivemind Automation on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. And if you like this video, hit the thumbs up button down below to give it a like. If you're not already subscribed, please consider subscribing now. While you're at it, if you hit the bell icon, you'll also receive a notification when I release new videos, and that's usually every week. If you are currently in the market for a VPN provider, I've also placed an affiliate link for NordVPN in the video description as well. I chose to partner with NordVPN because they have the best infrastructure of any of the VPN providers 
they have a strict no logs policy and servers all over the planet. On top of that, they've got apps for just about every platform, including Windows, Mac, Linux, iOS, and Android. So no matter what platform you're using, you can protect your sensitive information while you browse the web, even on unsecured Wi-Fi. So get a VPN today and use my link below to sign up for NordVPN. Lastly, if you enjoy what I do here and you wanna to help to support the channel, there is also a buy me a coffee link in the video description below. Contributions that you make through Buy Me A Coffee are put towards making more and better content for you to enjoy. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Stu from Hive Mind Automation. I'm looking forward to seeing you next time. Bye for now.